All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we have a Chicago Bulls video for you. If you enjoy this video, hit the like button, hit the sub button. It is greatly appreciated. Now, in the last couple of days, I've been making, or honestly, since the draft lottery concluded, I've been making Bulls videos for who I think they should get at the point guard position. I'm going to go ahead and go through four point guard options if AK does not sign Lonzo Ball. Got this from an article on Fansided, and I just kind of want to give my side of if I agree or not. So the Chicago Bulls this last week were rumored to sign or to be interested in signing 23-year-old Lonzo Ball. And depending on the price tag, I think the Bulls will still make a big push to get him out of restricted free agency. While a lot of it a lot of the number depends on how many suitors he has this summer. If it's just a handful of teams that are interested, uh, then the Bulls could definitely, definitely get him. So I would say he's going to get probably $20 million. Uh, that still should be a no, relative no-brainers for the Chicago Bulls. But Anyways, they need to find some backup options in case Lonzo Ball, something happens to Lonzo, someone offers him a say, you know, you never know, maybe a team like the Knicks, who has a ton of money come in and they offer him just a ridiculous price. So let's get through this. I've, I've talked about like, Kyle Lowry before in one of these videos, but, and I've actually talked about Spencer Dinwiddie. I really like Spencer, let's start off with Spencer Dinwiddie. I like Dinwiddie on the Chicago Bulls. It's would be nice because he is kind of an up and coming point guard in the NBA. But last season, uh, ACL injury knocked him out for pretty much all except for like four or five games at the start of the season. And so Dinwiddie is probably going to cost more than $20 million as well, which is why I'm not as high on Spencer Dinwiddie. However, I don't think he's going to be the, I don't think he's going to garner the same amount of attention as Alonzo Ball will just because of post-injury. It's really rare that a player picks up right where they left off. If Dinwiddie can come back at 80 or even 90% of what he was with the Nets when he scored 18 points per game or 19, 19 points per game, six and a half assists per game, then the Bulls could definitely use him. He's still a major upgrade at the point guard position. Keep in mind, we need a guy who can come in and play make. It doesn't necessarily have to be a third star, like, you know, superstar scorer, you know, DeMar DeRozan type player. It can be a Spencer Dinwiddie who can come out here and get you 16 and 6 every single night. That would still be extremely useful. So I still think Dinwiddie is a good option for the Bulls. Uh, I, I would say they would go for Dinwiddie if Lonzo Ball's price tag was just too high. And if Dinwiddie doesn't have too many suitors, then his price could drop as well. So next up, we'll talk about Ben Simmons. I'm not too huge on Ben Simmons just because of the, like what it takes to get him. But Ben Simmons shot 24 of seven, or 25 of 74 from the free throw line in the playoffs this year. And it was just a disastrous performance. But the Chicago Bulls, I don't know how we would use him 100%. I think, I guess they would throw him at the point guard position, which is why I'm not too sold on Ben Simmons. Personally, I don't want a point guard that can't shoot a three. Uh, that's just not who I am. But if Ben Simmons could play the four, this would be a match made in heaven. Ben Simmons, he, he's he's pricey, man. He's extremely pricey. This, this is more of a trade. This is definitely, obviously, more of a trade. Uh, <sighs> As far as like what we, I'm just not too big. If you didn't have to give up a hand and a leg, if it was a free agent signing, I would be a little bit bigger on Ben Simmons. But he seems like the biggest trade candidate in the offseason for just the NBA in general. So uh, assumingly he's going to have a bunch of suitors and there's going to be a bunch of offers sent Philly's way. And with that being said, it's probably just going to be hard to get him from Philly. So next up, let's talk about Kyle Lowry. I love Kyle Lowry. I've talked about Kyle Lowry. I think I've dedicated a whole video to Kyle Lowry, why he should come join the Chicago Bulls. I made one. I think my last Bulls video, he was it was talked about Kyle Lowry and Mike Connolly. But I really like Kyle Lowry. And this is a very realistic. He's a six-time All-Star. He is 35 years old. The fit makes a lot of sense. He could be kind of the Chicago Bulls' Chris Paul. Or Yeah, he could be the... You know how the Phoenix Suns went out and got Chris Paul, and now they're in the NBA Finals. 
that could be Kyle Lowry, could be the Bulls' Chris Paul. So you'd put them in an immediate better position to contend in the playoffs than what the Toronto Raptors can provide. No disrespect to the Raptors, but you would have Zach Levine, Nikola Vucevic, and Kyle Lowry. And first off, just in the pick and roll game with Kyle Lowry and Vucevic would be extremely deadly, but it might not be the best trio in the Eastern Conference right away, but it would definitely put you at a top four team or maybe even a top five team if you want to play it on the safe side. But they would 100% make the playoffs, even if there were a bunch of injuries. They, this team would still find a way to make the playoffs. And what I really like about Kyle Lowry is you'd be able to find a little bit more of a short-term or lucrative type of deal where it's a little bit more flexible, a little bit more affordable. And that way you sign him to like a two-year contract, Kobe White sitting back, met, getting mentored by Kyle Lowry every single day. And then two years from now, when Kobe White's rookie contract's up, we'll know if we should extend him or if we should go find a new point guard. So that's like my biggest reason why I like it. Because Lowry, you know, a 35-year-old point guard, it should never be a long-term option for any basketball team. But it could definitely elevate the starting unit in the, in the short term. And then that short term hopefully will lead to long-term success with Kobe White. But the thing about Kyle Lowry is, first off, I don't think he'll return to the Raptors. But you've got teams like Philly. You've got teams like Miami, the Lakers, the Clippers. Like, they're all going to be at least... If they're not making pushes for Lowry, there's going to be a ton of rumors. And so that's the that's like the big reason I don't know if Kyle Lowry is going to come join the Bulls because I think he would have to strike out on pretty much all of those teams I just mentioned in order to come to Chicago. Let's talk about one more. We'll talk about Reggie Jackson here. I love Reggie Jackson, but Reggie, I don't know. The idea the Clippers get Lonzo Ball and then the Bulls get Reggie Jackson, like that's a pretty insane idea. The thing about Reggie Jackson is in the playoffs, he averaged 17.8 points per game, 3.2 rebounds, 3.4 assists, almost a steal. And he shot 48% from the field, 40 point eight percent from deep and 87.8 percent from the free throw line i mean this is the guy who dropped 42 points in a very vital game for okc back in 24 back in 2012 when russell westbrook and kd were on the team and people forget about that all the time like he almost saved that playoff run and so this is the production that the chicago bulls are looking for but reggie jackson's stock is probably the highest it's ever been right now the good news is there are so many other point guards around the league that are up for trade or up for signing this summer so that's going to hopefully bring reggie jackson's price down because he's going to want to still have a role on a team and this really it might be the absolute last last re like this last possibility this really might be the last last chance this would most likely come if they struck out on Lonzo Lowry, like even Chris Paul. But uh, I would rather have the Chicago Bulls go after a Reggie Jackson than a, say, Dennis Schroeder. So I like Reggie Jackson. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. Let me know down in the comments below which of these four point guards you would rather see join the Chicago Bulls or just what point guard you would see join the Chicago Bulls. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button.